Recording in progress. Uh, so this is the weekly outlook meeting on the 25th day of March. And uh, there's a disclaimer, I'm not going to read it, but you know, I'll know about it, right? So there it is, all right? Oh, good for you. So it's time for a new strategy. We need a paradigm shift. It's an important change that happens when the usual way of thinking or doing something is keyword here is replaced, replaced by a new and different way. Not just add a little this, and I'm going to add a little of that ProAct over here, sprinkle some ProAct dust on this. That doesn't work. You need uh, you have a bad methodology if you're not doing if you're not doing price sections, not ProAct. If you're not doing price sections, it's a bad methodology. And if you try to tweak a bad methodology, all you do is complicate it. So we never go to the charts looking for a trade. We go looking for market structure and finding the wide open space. And if you don't know the structure, the real estate of the day, the stop and potential limit, you are not trading, you're gambling. And to make it in the Forex, you must press your winners without exception. Without exception means exactly that. And you recall that we have a brand new tool. We actually have a couple of them, but the tool we have now on the Info Center is the um, trip calculator, where you're able to calculate your entry, your target price, your second entry, and your third, and it will tell you what that trade is worth. So this trade I just put up there this morning is worth 300 pips if you execute, all right? So it makes you think through the whole process, figure where you're going to put them, and put it in there and find out if it's worthwhile for you to do it, all right? So if you got 300 pips and you got 120 pips, which one should you take? 300 pips, all right? So that's really cool, all right? So personal trading consistency comes when a trader consistently trades, only when the trade setup that they can consistently do is consistently happening in the charts. And this is why we ask you to major in pole trades and pullbacks in the beginning. Now, pole trades will drive you nuts because they take a long time, but they are excellent trades because they're over 90% going to do it unless you're at a pole with a flag at the top or the bottom, right? And pullbacks happen every day, all day long, and you can become world class in 100 hours on either one of those. And that means you can earn while you learn. You can break the rules and get away with it, but eventually the rules will break you for not respecting them. The magic numbers for success are a 65% win ratio. That means you lose 35 out of 100 trades and 35 plus pips average pip capture. And that the only way to do that is to press your winners without exception. So trade only micros to get to those stats. All right. So we're going to review the IC alerts that I've already sent out here. And we'll get those out of the way here. And let me go to the charts. Got a lot of stuff up here, all right? So uh, let me pull up the IC here. And we'll go to the alerts right here. All right. So first thing I do is I send you out an alert on the um, uh, what I think the dollar is doing. All right. So I have the dollar down. If it reverses, replot the targets. Okay, so here we go. All right, so you can see we've made the turn. All right, and the big deal here is that we, right here, if we go right here, we opened and closed the candle below there. All right, so that's called the neckline. All right, now there are two necklines. One of them is here, all right, and one of them is there. I like the one with the angle, all right, because it, I don't leave those pips on the table. But most everybody in the world is trading the neckline down here. And you can see they also open and close the candle below there. All right. Opening and closing a candle is a big deal. All right. Now, because we have this many tops and bottoms, we can now put a channel on here. And that will give us the angle. Let's see what it looks like. We're going to take it off those tops. And right there, that's all it is right now. But they already proved the heart line. So we're looking for this move to the downside here. And you can see that MACD is telling you we're headed down and there's the opportunity on dollar index, okay? So dollar to the downside would mean that uh, GJ is going to the upside. So let me pull that up and here's the GJ and pop it up here. All right, one a lot to choose with for tonight. All right, so I got the GJ up as the dollar goes down. This is a, 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 a Larry would say you got a cup and handle here, and he's probably right. There's the handle, and now we're looking for the up move. The ATR target is right there. All right, now if this once this stops, and I don't know that it's stopped yet, 
you need to pop a fib, we'll go ahead and do it now, but it may need to be uh, changed, okay? Uh, EJ and Gigi both are pop, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ahead of you. I caught it before you even posted it in there, Larry. Look at me. I'm learning from you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so pop a uh, fib from the swing high, a low to the swing high, and I don't know that it's a bottom yet, but if that's the bottom, then the 1,000 is here, right? So that's 100% of that move. So you need to watch for that, and hopefully you get to that right there. All right, so the uh, entry price is 191 191.61, which is right here. And you can obviously take it on the bounce down here, as long as it's not a 382, I mean a 214. So let's pop a fib on it and see where that is. Swing low to swing high, and we're currently at the 214, okay? So that does not help us. We can't take a trade there, all right? We can take a trade at the 382. So if it comes down here to the 382 and bounces, that's going to change the ATR and bring it down lower because we'll have a new high lower for the day, all right? So uh, there we go, all right? So be aware of that. There's a big opportunity there, as you can see, big, all right? Uh, yeah, exactly right, Larry. So let's see if we get to the 382, which is also where I had the stop based on where it was, but you're, you'll, you'll now reduce this down to here. Stop will be down at 618. By the way, that's your job, not mine. I said I sent it out at five o'clock and that's what it is at that time, but it could change very dr dramatically by the time we, uh, you know, two hours later, all right? So be aware. I'm gonna take the down stuff off over here right now. And there we go, I'm gonna take this off. No sense in having it all messed up. All right, so looking for that big trade up there. That's a big one, all right? Let's go to the uh, the next one and back to the alert, which is the EJ right here, all right? EJ looks very similar, as you can see, all right? Now, this one is close. Uh, yeah, I still, I'll give Larry credit. It is a head and shoulder, I mean, a cu close, cup and handle. There's the handle, we're looking for that. There is the limit up there, right? So the trade is uh, entry price is 164.22, which is right about in there, right there. And uh, let me get the right tool up here. And the target at right now is 164.34, right up there, right? So there you go. I can get a pivot in here now. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so swing low. Swing high and swing low right now. Now, I don't know that that's it, all right? It's actually a little lower than that. Right there, okay? So the 1,000 is here. So be aware that this may only go to the 1,000 and that'd be it. You can make money there, but hopefully it goes to target and you hold for the 1.618, all right? All right, anybody got any questions on that one? All right, good, all right. We'll go to the next one. All right, next one is the uh, Euro Aussie. All right, not a whole lot to choose from here tonight. We're in a pennant in the Euro Aussie, but uh, we're coming to, we came down on the pennant. That means we're probably coming out of here going to the downside. You do have a zero line break to the downside, but you got us up and down, so it's a big sideways movement here. But we are in a pennant, right? Now, typically, if it goes into the pennant going down, it's coming out of that pennant going down, all right? And whatever that is right there, right here, is what this will be from this top. So, you know, somewhere around in, down in here, most likely. All right, so uh, it is a sell at... Um, 16582, 16582. Oh, wow, that's 62, sorry, not 82, 62 is right there. And the trade is down to there. The target is 6478, that's 6477, all right? So there it is, big opportunity. We can get a fib on here also. All right, so let's do that. You go for, I'm going to take this last piece. Okay, I got two places. I can take the big one and I get a big target. I can take this one and I get today's target. So I'm going to look for today's target. All right, so I'm going up here. I'm going to go from swing high to swing low and swing high right there. And the 1,000 is right here below this bottom right here. All right, there you go. All right, anybody got any questions on that one right there? Everybody good? Yes, no? Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kay. Okay. All right. Last one is going to be the Euro Aussie. 
I mean, the pound Aussie. And looks very similar, except it is really sideways, as you can see. Let me get this out of the way here. Hold on. All right, so once again, you just got a sideways move here. I'm tempted to put it in a pennant, but uh, eh, maybe I will. Uh, we'll go ahead and put it in and see what it looks like first. Eh, we'll leave it. Okay, so there's the opportunity to downside. I can get a fib on here from the swing high, right here, the swing low, back to the swing high. And that gives me the 1,000 right here. And the limit is up to 1,270. All right, so it is a uh, sell. And the entry price is 93.16 right here. And we're looking for that trade right there. And you want to hold to the 1.618 below it right there. There you go. Anybody got any questions on that one? Everybody good? All right. Good. Okay, thanks. All right, back to the PowerPoint. And all right. so here's the fundy times we need to be aware of this week. So let me pull this over here. And here we go. All right, nothing today, as you can see. But tomorrow morning, we have uh, CB Consumer Confidence. We also have uh, on, fr on th when? Thursday, Pending home sales and university, a revised University of Michigan consumer sentiment. Those will both be in the New York session. Uh, Walker is speak, Waller is speaking on Wednesday and Powell is speaking on Friday. All right? Friday won't affect you because you don't trade on Friday anyway. But uh, Wednesday, it might affect you. All right? So be aware when these are. I do this every weekend. Uh, when I do the what I see, the first thing I do is these. All right? So uh, there you go. You know, this is the, the homework you got to do, tarea in Spanish. That's the uh, uh, homework you got to do before the market opens. All right. All right. So how's the real estate of the week uh, trade doing? We got a little bit of it, but not much of it. So uh, why do we want to trade this? Because there are potential for massive pips. You can see uh, everybody's doing well up here, but K did 6,637 pips on the real estate of the week trade on this at this day right here and that's not a record by the way so here's a potential for massive pips if you execute number one and number two the market works in your favor all right you have no control over the market so what do you got to do you got to work on your execution it's you so our lesson tonight is to find the real estate of the week swing trade for this week but more importantly is to how to identify it so that i can trade it by myself when I'm not in a weekly outlook room and I can see it, all right? So we'll just go to the charts here. Let me end the show here, all right? All right. So uh, first thing we do is we take a look at the big ATRs. And the reason we do that is because the bigger the ATR, the quicker and faster it can go to target and the further it can go. So we're looking for big ATRs, all right? So the first one we got here is the Swiss yen at 123 pips, wow. Pretty good size. We got a Euro Yen at 124 pips, all right? That's nice. We got the uh, uh, Pound Dodge 107. We got Pound, New uh, Pound Yen at 141. And we got uh, Pound New Zealand at 112. And if we don't find anything, we'll go back to that Pound Aussie, all right? So that's it. Uh, oh, Dollar Yen is 113 pips. We'll look at that also. All right, so we, we've identified uh, five currencies that have the biggest ATRs. So we'll start over here in the pound yen. And, uh, you know, we're going up, right? So you can see that. And we don't have much room up here. As you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 210 pips is all it is to the top, all right? Now, if we get up to the top and go down, it'll be a monster trade uh, to the downside because it'll be all the way to here. So we don't want to trade this to the upside. Well, we want to trade it in a day up, but we want to we want to actually a real estate of the week trade would be that trade right there. All right. So be aware that it might be a real estate of the week if it tops out. All right. So nothing to do on it now because we're going up, but it is going up 210 pips. So there's a couple of days with the trading to the upside. Let's take a look at the EJ. Same problem here. All right. We got one, two, three, four, 120 pips to the top. That's all. But watch for the downside move. And that would be right here. And the downside would be a monster from there to there. All right. So trade it intraday up here. And then a real estate of the week trade from there down to there. Nothing for us to do today. All right. But you can see where the opportunity is. All right. 
All right, let's take a look at the UJ. All right, so it's all about the real estate of the day. All right now, the UJ follows the dollar index. All right now, you got a flag baiting uh, possibility here. You also got a possibility for a bull flag. This could be a bull flag, and maybe they're going to go up, or this could be nothing more than a sideways move. Now, if it's a sideways move, all right, it could go up if it's not the top. But right now, it's telling you it's the top. All right, so do sideways moves move, work at the top? Are they continuations if it is the top? No. Thank you, Robert. They are not. You say, how do I know that? Go do 300 of them and you'll know that. All right. So when traders ask a question to me, like, and then I know they haven't done a 300. Yeah, but it was, a, you know, it was, it said it was the flag and it was going up and they were right here at the top. And that means I know they didn't do their 300. Because once you do 300, you know they don't work at the top, you don't work at the bottom, all right? So there. All right, so in this one, we're going to see what the Three Musketeers say about it, all right? And the Three Musketeers say, what are they saying? Uh, we're trying to go nowhere. We might try to go up. We're trying 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 to go up. They're telling us they're going to try to continue this thing up. Wow. Uh, I do have a confirmer says, yep, you are all potentially right in here starting to trend all right now don't trade that it's just a piece of information all right so let me go back here on a 240 and see where we are and god ah, we are at a top let me look at the day chart now i rarely go there god ah, we are at a day chart top folks all right so it's really going to have to prove that and especially with the dollar yen telling us going down we got to be very, very careful of that. But you can now see if we do go down, this is the trade right there, right? So what am I going to do with that, right? So I'm going to go back to the 240, and I'm going to take this off because I'm biased to the upside if I see a channel, right? And MACD is already telling you you're headed down, right, right here, right? So you got down on the 240. Let's go to the 60, right? You got down to the 60. 60 says, uh, you just got a zero line break to the upside, okay? But you had one over here, and that's as far as they went. They respected that top. So I would not pay much of attention to it today. I watch for the sell. So I'm going to put slope resistance across, slope support across there, and a breakout here is what I'm looking at, all right? So where are we going to go if we do break out? Well, here's the day chart bottom here. All right, so now, this is not really hard. This is nothing more than simple math. I'm currently at 151.38, 151.38. And the bottom down here is 144.92. And that equals 646 pips to the downside. If it goes, 646, all right? We'll come back on it. All right, the next big one we got is the Swiss Yen. All right, so Swiss Yen already trying to make a move to the downside, as you can see. Take it up here, the 240 chart. All right, let's see where this one, oh, get rid of that. All right, so where we might go down to the downside, all the way down to here. Hmm, that looks pretty sweet. See, you find big wide open spaces like that, don't miss them, don't miss them. And then don't miss the wide open space between them, all the way down, see? These are big wide open spaces. You get in here, you got one, two, three, four, five, six seven atr all right you could put a total of seven entry orders in that big area right there wow huge all right and that'll make you five six thousand pips you wonder how, how could k make five six thousand pips in one trade i've made six thousand pips in a year let alone one trade well this is how you do it all right we're learning how to do it all right Simple math, once again, don't make this complicated. All right, so oh, got the wrong thing up. Let me get my calculator up. All right, we're currently at 168.29, 168.29, and the bottom here is 161.64. All right, so that is 665 pips. Wow, 665. All right, one more is the pound New Zealand. All right, pound New Zealand, we're in a rising wedge potentially. Maybe making the turn to the downside here. Uh, let's go to a little bigger chart, 240. All right. So before I take this off, we've got a big wide open space to the upside. MACD's rolling over up. All right. So now I'm going to check the three musketeers. All right. Why would I do that? Because I want to know what they're doing tonight. 
Yeah, we're going up. Well, we might try to turn it. No, we're going up. No, we're trying to turn it. We're going up. We're trying to turn it. All right. So we don't have a lot of information yet. Half of the more half of our, our tools say we're going up. The other half say we're not. But the rising wedge is a big deal, especially with divergence. You have divergence right here, all right? See that? Divergence, all right? So to the top, we don't have a real estate of the week trade, but we do have an interday trade, several of them. But if we break to the downside, we'll have a pretty good opportunity. Where are we going? Well, let's go all the way down here. Let me take this off. And we'll put the bottom on down here. As you can see, that's the bottom. And we'll change that to pink. So we know it's a day chart. And there we go. All right. So now, let me take the, this off. I don't want the stuff to the upside because it biases me to the upside. Now, I can go put, if it breaks up in here, it'll take me all of 20 or 30 seconds to go find them. All right. So I'm not worried about that. All right. I'm, I'm concerned about the rising wedge to the downside, which is the opportunity. All right. So we pull up the, uh, um, excuse me, the calculator. And we're currently at 21051, And we subtract the bottom here is 20369, 20369. And that equals 682 pips. All right, so it comes down to UJ for 646 pips. Uh, CJ 665, one pip less than a diabolical number of 666, and pound New Zealand 682. All right, so let's go work them up. We're down to three currencies now. All right, so we don't need to go looking at all the other stuff. All right, we just need to identify where they are. All right, I'm going to take the stuff off to the upside. All right, because this is all going to the downside. I'm going to take this down off. All right, and now we got a, a clean chart. Let's make sure we got fibs correct. We do have fibs to here. That, that'll work because they're using them. As you can see, they're using them. Okay, so there we go. All right, so to the downside, all right? Get this up here a little bit higher. Yeah, let me just scrunch it down. There we go. All right, we need a break hook and go here. So where are the wide open spaces? There's one right here. There's one right here. There's a little one here. There's another little one here. Medium size here. Big one right here, and then a monster down here, all right? So these are all traded with entry orders. One right here, one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there. And that, and depending on your margin, you may not be able to put that many in there, all right? But uh, it depends on your margin account. You got a $10,000, $20,000 account trading micros, yeah, you have no problem at all. You got 600 bucks in your account, it's going to be a whole different ball game, all right? But... You put those in. When do we put those in, Kay? Kay always answers this for me. Now. Right now. Exactly right, Joe. There you go. So you, you it's your job to know where those lines are. Don't, don't say, well, tell me where they are. That doesn't help you a bit. You go find them. All right? Put the fib on and find those numbers. All right? If I tell you what the numbers are, did I help you? No, I didn't help you at all. Maybe it was a win in trade, but I didn't help you become a trader. All right? You find those numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six possibility. All right? Now, the key to all real estate of the week trades is trade one right there. All right? So trade one, we need a break, hook, and go. Break, hook, and go. That's the entry order. Once trade one goes in, its exit is here. All right. And you got to hold this trade through all the gyrations that it does, all the way up and down and all that. And that'll drive you absolutely crazy when it, you're going to pull against you. And you know that's 180 pips. And you're, you're break even up here. The whole, code, the whole deal is to get trade one to break even. All right. You don't need to move the stop on trade one again. Maybe not even till down here. All right. Leave it alone. Let it breathe. Let the currency breathe up and down. As long as you break even, you cannot lose on that trade. Now, if they want to take it down, if they want to take it down, they're going to have to do lower highs. So as they work it down, they're going to have to do lower highs all the way and wide open spaces. They'll take advantage of all those. All right. Well, if your stop is up here at break even, once you get trade two on in here, you probably can't lose. All right. 
You, I mean, it could. It could come up here like this, especially if it's actually a sideways move and actually not a real estate of the week. We don't know that yet. So we figure that it's a real estate of the week and let's let the chart pull it, prove it. So trade one goes on here with a normal stop, three times the stop of the technical stop. And once you get it, to, once trade two goes in down here, that stop goes to break even. Now, uh, uh, you don't need to move it again, not for a while, maybe all the way down into this area here before you move it into profit, right? Because trade one's job is to provide profit to cover the risk of the additional positions. That's its only job. Now, if you get all the way down here, you'll be doing fine, all right? Now, one of the things that we now have that we can help us on this is we got a, a trip calculator, all right? Now, we can't put all these in, but we can put the three in, all right? So let me clear this off, all right? So the first entry price is going to be 161.26 after a 161.26, no decimal points, all right? The target price is 144.92. 144.92. All right. The second entry is going to be the break of this fib at 150.67. I put it one 150.64. 150.64. The closer to the number, the better off you are. Third entry is going to go. We'll just take this one down here. Not that. Not that there's, there's three trades in here inside that space. We'll just take this one right here. 149.80. 149.80. Now you know that you have five more positions to the downside. But if you just execute those three trades, nothing but those three trades, trade one, trade two, come on, trade two and trade three, that's 4,242 pips without the extra order, extra one. Anybody interested in that? So if you got a small account, that's what you do. You trade those, those three positions and you just hold them and you hold them and move your stop, move your stop, move your stop, move your stop. If you got a bigger account, all right, you know, um, place them again. I have been in positions where I had to close trades like this out, and they were all in profit and big profits still going, but I had a bigger opportunity on another currency. And because I didn't have enough margin, I've had to close these positions right here just so I could trade the bigger opportunity on another car, uh, currency. Now, let me tell you, that's not a bad place to be. <laughs> <laughs> in profit with three positions to the downside and there's a bigger and better opportunity somewhere else and i don't have enough margin i close these down and go trade the other one right i don't know if any one of them is going to work so there you go this could really help you just those three positions it's 4242 pips right that's it right well, you know, that's what that's what as, as you mature and become, uh, you know, understand the market better, Scott, it becomes intuitive. You don't really think about it. You go, well, there's a better opportunity here. I got I got another 150 pips left in this trade, but there's 600 over here. See, well, what, what do I want to do? Well, I like the 150 I'm in, but, you know, that 600 looks really good. See, so there are times when you want to do that. I've done it multiple times. So there we go, especially when I had a big account, when I was trading a PAM account, oof, sometimes there would be some big monsters and I had to make that for my clients. So I'd have to close clients out with profit and go enter them another client, uh, another position for more profit, right? And our goal every month was to get uh, our, our traders, our clients money to 3% uh, increase a month. That's all, 3%, because that's 36% a year, right? And, you know, what ended up happening is I'd have clients, they had little small accounts. You know, when you first start out, you're begging your your brother, your sister, your know, best friend, hey, could you give me $10,000? Let me trade it for you, that kind of thing. So they were all a lot of little accounts in the beginning. Until you start show a, a, you know, pretty good return on your investment, then the big money starts coming in at fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Well, the 50, 60, $70,000 people never cared what was happening. Just tell me at the end of the quarter how we did. The little five, eight, ten thousand dollar accounts would send me an email every stinking day. How much did you make me today? How much did you make me today? How much did you make me today? You know, it's crazy. So I, I, I called a couple of buddies of mine who uh, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, Joe, in the beginning, letting the trade breathe usually caused hyperventilating on those pullbacks. Yeah, and that's the hard thing to get used to, right, is understanding, once you understand how the market is evolving, in order for them to keep this going, they're going to have to pull back 150 pips, which means you're going to give up 150 pips on trade one. Now, don't give up 150 pips on the other ones. Take them off intraday, but leave trade one on. Right? And the reason for that is real simple. Let me just show, illustrate that. So you come down here and you got free trades in, right? You got your entry order, market order, and a market order, okay? So it does those and it comes down to you like this. And then all of a sudden, okay, you see that it's bouncing. That's it, right? So you put that in the bank and you put that in the bank, but you hold trade one at break even, right? all right? So trade one is now break even right there, right? And you hold it. Now, you pop a fib from the swing hop from where you started to here, and the 50% is right up in here. Well, how many pips is that? One, two, three, three and a half. So 110 pips. Is, in order to just go to the 50% and turn to the downside, it's going to do 110 pips against you. And your brain, your right brain is going to go, no way, man, put those 150 pips in the bank. If you do, you start all over. If you don't, and you hold it, and you've already banked money, when it comes up to the 50 and makes a turn, that is a free trade. Why is it a free trade? Because your profit on trade one is going to cover the risk of trade two. And that's why you don't want to do it. All right. Now, it's going to be one of the hardest things you ever did in trading in your life. Ask the traders in here who have done it. They're going to tell you, oh my gosh, that was one heck of a deal. But if they executed and they held their position and it traded and they took the second position and it goes to target, they're gonna be going, oh my gosh, that four, who cares about 4,200 pips? I got 6,500 like Kay or Joe or, or uh, Larry or John or somebody like that, right? Maxine, right? So that's a pretty good opportunity there on the dollar yen. All right, let's go work up the uh, CJ. I really like the CJ. We've got a big ATR, 118 pips a day right now. 123, excuse me, 123 pips a day. All right, so you can see where the, where are the open spaces right there. See, this is not rocket science. It's just a matter. There's a fib on there. That's all I got on there. Those they are. All right. So where do when do I put them in? If you like this one, you place that one. You place that one, and you place that one. Now, fast trackers in here. You got seven orders. In here, you got five. In here, you got three. All right, so you can stack a bunch of trades in here, all right? But everybody else, just take the four trades to the downside until you get used to it. If it's the first time you've ever traded one, don't try to add 21 positions. Add four and see if you can handle it, all right? So once again, trade one. The key to this trade, the key to the trade is trade one. It does not come off till there. And you got to hold it no matter what the retracement is, all right? All right, so uh, we placed those entry orders right now, and uh, let's work this thing up. All right, so we're just going to do three because that's all this allows us to do. All right, so the first entry is going to be at 168.18. Uh, 168.18. All right, target price is 161.64. 161.64. All right, second entry is below that fib, 167.82, 167.80, 167.80. This is real hard. Look how hard this is. Third trade is going to be down here, be about 165.87, put it at 165.84, 165.84, .84, and there you go. This trade is 3,146 pips, all right? So you now know the UJ is a better trade, all right? This is, uh, that was 4,200 trades over there, 4,200 pips. Here, it's only 3,000. Not a bad trade. If you get it, it won't be a bad trade at all. All right. And in fact, if you're new to this, this may be a better trade because it doesn't have as many positions to manage. It doesn't have as far to go. It is still a phenomenal trade for 3,000 pips. And if you're not interested in 3,000 pips, I don't know what you're doing here. All right. So... Again, trade one stays on. All right, let's go down to pound, pound New Zealand and see what that looks like. And it's 662, uh, 682, bigger trade, all right, here. We're gonna trade it below here, all right? So we gotta have wide open spaces. Let me bring it all the way down here. Grab it, drag it down in here. 
right? Now we stop. They already tell you, yep, we know that number, all right? So there we go. Now, if you want to prove this, all you got to do, let me put this down, is go the opposite way. Just go from the top to the bottom here, right, like that, all right? And now you're going to come over here. Do they know the numbers? 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 See? And then when they prove that you know the numbers, you don't have to keep this anymore, and you can get rid of it. Yep, they know those numbers. Okay, that means they know these, because they're the same thing, just called a different thing that's going up or down. All right, so we can see the, the wide open space. Trade one is here, trade two is here, trade three is here, trade four is here, trade five is here, and trade six is here, all right? Entry orders, when do they go in? Now, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now, these may have to be adjusted. So as you, you put them in now, but you might see, oh my gosh, this thing's gonna break down through here like this, but it's 11 o'clock in the morning and they're gonna be done and they're gonna pull back up. In which case, you would take that one off, wait for the pullback, and then place it again here for that trade. Does everybody understand that? All right? The pullback is your friend. All right? You see what I'm saying? Question. And you, Thank you, Robert. And you guys are in charge of that, not me. It's your charts. You're the one. It's your money. You're in charge of it. You got to be a good steward. You got to recognize, uh oh, we're going to pull back here. My, all I got is dojis and spinning tops down here. I'm going to bank this tr big trade I put in it. I'm going to put that in the bank and I'm going to get rid of this one right here, take it off. But if I get a pullback here, I'm going to put that, put that one back on here, leave this on, leave this on, leave this on, and leave this on. You see? So there's a lot of stuff that has to happen as you're going en route to the target. All right. And you say, yeah, but, you know, how realistic is that? Well, let's go back over here. How realistic was them to do this, all right? They took off and went right up to the target. You see that? Wow. Looks like they don't have any problem doing that. They don't. Now, here's where your big problem is, right there. All right? That's your big problem. Why? Because it's going to be a big pullback. It's the only big pullback in the whole deal. But if you trade it down here and your stop is at break even, you got nothing to worry about. It makes the turn, starts up, and you get this move up here. Now you can move this stop up there underneath here. All right? Now you're protecting 250 pips of profit, which is going to cover all the risk of anything it does up in this area. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody catching on? Okay, good, Joe. Thank you, Robert. All right, good. All right, so, all right, I'm really interested because of this rising wedge. Now, remember, when you put a rising wedge on, the first thing you do, which I should have done already, but it's all right because I can do it in class, is clone that top line, create a clone, drag it out to the support of that rising wedge right down there, right there. Now, what I do, I don't want it big, I don't want it little. I go in here and I change it to a small number so it's not very big, and I dash it. All right. Now, I can see that. All right. Now, if it isn't a rising wedge, all right, it looks like a rising wedge, but if it comes down here and bounces up, then I know it's a channel. See? If it breaks here, I know it's a rising wedge, and I'm underway. All right? At, at either one, this is trade one right here. That's trade one. All right? If it bounces and you're a break-even, you can't lose. All right? If it breaks out, you're looking for trade two here, right there, trade three here, trade four, and on down the line, right? And remember, trade one does not come off till it gets to the target, all right? So let's do the uh, calculations on this one. I love this little tool, you know? Jerry saw me doing this a couple of weeks ago in class. And he said, I can make you a tool that does that. I said, what the hell, where have you been all my life? I've only known you 35 years. For crying out loud, it takes you 35 years to Cover my be behind. What's going on? Okay. So they made this tool, and I love this tool. All right. So first entry price is going to be a breakout here. I traded below the T30 there. It's 103, 103, 1037. I'll just use the last four digits. One oh oh wait, I can't do that. Two one oh three seven. All right, that's the entry. Uh, target price. Is 
second entry is going to be below this uh, right here. Right? So we're looking at mm, maybe right in there. I think that. Let me get out here. I can see what the bottom of that handle is. It's uh, 20107. Wow, is that right? No, 20, uh, 2.1007. 2.1007. All right. Third entry is going to be below the fib right here, which is at 20932. 20932. And this is worth 3,633 pips, right? If you only make the first three, not counting if you make the next four, if you make only the first three, you're looking at 3,600 pips. Gee, I think I could handle that. My, my account share would like that. Okay, then you got to execute. Execute. What's the number one thing you do? Hold trade one. You got to print it out and paste it on the monitor. Hold trade one, all right? You also have all those of you on on Microsoft. You've got this little thing called um, hold on, uh, a little uh, thing like this where you can add a new one. Ah, where you go? The sticky note, and you can put a little thing. It says hold trade one, like that, all right? And then you get rid of that one and you can just you can move this all over. You can hold it up here and you can just leave it on this chart, right? Hold trade one, whatever you got to do to do that, right? So there you go. All right. So we got three opportunities. The best one is the UJ. All right. We'll do them all. We do, all three of them are good opportunities. So we're going to do real estate of the week to the downside here on the UJ. R-E-O-T-W down. All right, and it's uh, 686, 646 pips. All right, there we go. All right, we got the uh, uh, Swiss yen. And by the way, if you're a newbie, I would trade the Swiss yen. All right, if you're a newbie, it's not as far, and a Swiss friend really does nice stuff. All you got to do is look at this chart and you go, Wow, I could have certainly traded that pretty easily. Yeah, sideways movers are a pain, but could I have traded that up on every one of those pullbacks? Yeah, because I'm a pullback. I'm world class in pullbacks. All right. So because I'm world class in pullbacks, every time this pulls back, there's my opportunity. There's my opportunity. There's my opportunity. There's my opportunity. See? All right. So get lots of opportunities. Say, so, well, can it really do that? Well, they didn't have any problem going up. They did the same distance going up or in a range. So they can certainly do the same distance going down, and they're already headed down, as you can see. All right, your price feed. Uh, go up here and check it up here in System Settings, Robert, and make sure it says Auto, and it, it's a two hundred eight. Have a large gap between four a.m. Thursday till noon. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, that's a data feed, and it wouldn't be just you. All of us should have it. If otherwise, what you might have had was your antivirus. See, remember, every time a candle comes in, it's, it's an intrusion into your computer. And uh, your antivirus may say, that's a, that's a, that's a virus. That's a, that's a worm. That's a whatever. Right? And it may stop them. Right? So you need to check your settings, Robert, and say, what the heck is going to do? I might have to set them a little lighter right? um, and see if that helps. Right? But make sure, first step is to make sure you're auto and that right here. All right? Then close your chart down and reopen it. All right? So got EA's breaking out of the, out of the um, triangle. Ooh, that's nice. That's not our that's not our real estate of the week trade, but it is a trade for tonight. All right. So there we go. EA, there we go. We're getting a break right now. It gives us permission to go to 10. All right. So you see the break. We're here just in time. Do we jump on this now? No, we need a break hook and go. Why can't I dip, trade this right now? Because I'm selling at the bottom. I don't sell at the bottom. I sell on the hook. What if it doesn't hook? I got entry orders down here. All right? If you're going to trade this, you already got to have your entry orders in. All right? That's all there is to it. All right? So you can see it's a really good trade right here. Really good opportunity if it happens. All right? 
So this is trade one, and this is trade two, right there. See how big it is, all right? Now, fast trackers, this is trade two, and then this is trade three, all right? So they'll have three positions to the downside. Now, if you're not a fast tracker, you don't know what, you, what all that's about, so just trade two, but hold it to the target. And then when you get used to it, you get used to it, and you get used to it, all right? The next thing you know, hey, I, could, I got 40 pips in there. I'm gonna add another position. Pull out the trip calculator, figure it out, and see how many pips it's worth. All right. So there we go. All right. Ooh, it's coming out pretty, pretty hard right now. All right. All right. There you go, Robert. Okay, great. That's good to hear, Robert. Thank you. All right. Watch for the hook back. Don't trade it here. But if you're going to trade it, you got to have an entry order below the 382. And that's 6350. So 6346 right down in here for that target. 6346. Entry order. Little note here. Entry order down. All right. That's two positions to the downside. All right. Now let it pull back up. That's trade one. Trade two is down here. Once you've executed that, you have nothing to do but to move your stops. Nothing to do but to move your stops. All right. Now you can figure this one out uh, while we're here. I'm going to go back to what we're doing, but this is live right now. So let's go to the trip calculator, all right? So I get a pullback up here to 6564. 6564, okay? 16564. Pull back up to there. The target price is the uh where is that ATR? Oh no, let me look at 60. Let me find the target here. Oh, down here. Okay. 6477. 16477. All right. So first, oh, what's going on here? Clear the entry here. Do it again. Six, four, six, two, one, six, five, six, two, after the pullback, all right? Target price is six, four, seven, four, one, six, four, seven, four, all right? Second trade below the 618. Actually, you go a little higher than that. You go right below here, below the T30, six, five, Four zero one six five four zero. All right. Third price below this. Uh, you got thirty pips down here. All right. So six five six five hundred one six five zero zero. All right. Two hundred ninety pips. Two hundred ninety eight pips. Anybody interested in three hundred pips tonight? Now you know what it is. That's what that trade's worth to you. Do you want to go trade a five or eight, 10 pip one? Or would you rather invest your time and execute correctly and maybe pull 300 pips out of this trade, all right? Realize most retail traders aren't pulling 300 pips out of a tr out of their trades in a week. In a week, they're not pulling 300 pips net. You can do it in one trade because you trade price action, not indicators. So there you go, especially if you're world-class in pullbacks. You get world-class and pullbacks. All of this is a no-brainer because that hook is a pullback to go. All right, pulls down here, pulls back up. That pullback is a is a, uh, uh, an opportunity wherever they happen. All right, and the pullback is your friend. So that's worth 298 pips. No, not too shabby. All right, let's hope we get a pullback up here. Place your entry order. You can't trade it now. Place it now because it could wick through there and wick you in and then take you back up. So you wait till you see it moving back up. Place your entry order below the 382 for that target and wait for the entry order. Entry order happens, take the entry order. When trade two goes in, move your stop to break even and hold it to the bottom. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. Now you can go, okay, well, you know, I'd sure like to figure out that stop thing, okay? So we go to the stop calculator, all right? All right, we get out of the 10 minute chart here. All right, on a 10 minute, all right? So I can't, if I take the, no matter where I take this trade, the stop is the same, all right? The stop is one pip, it's five to seven pips above here. So five to seven pips right in about in this area right here, all right? So on odd number three or seven, so that would be uh, 65, uh, 87 right there, okay? So if I, if I get the pull back up here, it's the difference between this stop and where I take the trade. That's my that's my risk, all right? So that's the technical risk right there. 
And this stop has to be three times that, all right? So the entry is going to be right here at, what did I say? Uh, 6566, okay? All right, and the stop, the technical stop is 6587, 16587, okay? I put the stop in at 16629. Tells me right where to put it, all right? All right. Now, you know you can't have a nine because it's an odd number. So you're going to have to drop it to a seven. One, six, six, two, seven. All right. You can play with it when you got three, 100 pips in, uh, up there. All right. So it tells you right where to do it. Gee, these, this little IC is pretty dang cool. It just does a lot of work for me that I wouldn't, uh, I didn't have to do before. All right. So waiting for the pullback. We may not get one, folks. You know, you can see it. They're pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. So we don't have that entry order in yet. We've got to get a pullback before we put that entry order in. All right? We know where the target is. See, you never have to worry about the reward because you never make a trade unless you know the reward. You never make an entry unless you know the exit. All right? That's a rule. It's not a guideline. It's a rule. So I don't have to worry about reward. The reward will take care of itself. If it goes, there's trade two and trade one is up here. All right? See that? Now, if you're a fast tracker, I'd go ahead and put my entry order down in here, and it may go early. Now, that would be, uh, if you don't have any trades in, it's only one-third of your lots. But if you get these trades in up here, it would be three-thirds of your lots, right? And that will be a huge amount of money, huge amount of money. All right, there we go. All right, back to the uh, Swiss yen. All right, let me just put a little note up here. Get rid of this for now. All right, this is the real estate of the week. REOTW down for 665. Ooh, almost 666. Six, six. Right, that'll make you a ton of pips. Okay. And then over to Pound New Zealand. Right, ooh, come to Papa. Baby, 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 baby. I'm waiting on this one. Let me see if I get a pullback, because I will trade this sucker if I get a pullback. I, I need to find a target here, County of Zealand, for today. Uh, ATR, County of Zealand, is 112 pips. Right? Find the 5 o'clock candle from yesterday, right there. We put in a high up there. Oh, my 10, let me get up to the 60. Uh, right there. And 1,600, we put the high in there with that wick. Grab the wick, go down for 112 pips. 112. And there we go. So there's the target. All right, so now you see it, it changed this dramatically. All right, so here's the whole trade tonight. Right, right there. And I would hold to this bottom right there. And I hold to that. All right, so trade one is going to be wherever this stops and pulls back. Wherever that stops and pulls back, trade two is below that, wherever that is. That's trade two holding to the bottom, pull back up, trade one is up here. All right, not too shabby. All right, so where would we get that trade? Uh, let's go over and use the tools. You got tools here that are awesome. All right, so here's the trip uh, calculator. All right, let me clear this out. All right, so if I get a pullback up here to this bottom right here, which is uh, 201042, 21042, all right, target price is 20961, 20961, all right, second entry is going to be below this, let's make sure it breaks this in the 2100. I'm going to put it at uh, 20996, 20996, all right? And third entry, I won't get a third entry, all right? So that's it. Here's what that, that, that trade's worth 151 pips right there, all right? 151 pips. Anybody answer that in the next hour or two? It could happen. Use the tools. They'll help you. They'll do the math for you. All you got to do is find the, find the levels, all right? which is what you got to find anyway. All right, so Pound New Zealand's on the table for right now for a uh, real estate of the month and also 
tonight. All right, now to get trade one, remember it does not come off. All right, it does not come off here until all the way down here at the bottom. All right, so REOTW, we may be getting it right now. It's 682 pips and more so. There we go. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Everybody good? Good Robert K, Joe. Okay. So we got we got quite a bit here. Got some real big opportunities that they break down. So let's hopefully we get we get one or two of them, maybe all three of them. Now hopefully some of you get one, some of you get another, and some of you get another, and then we'll be able to count all three of them. That would be sweet. All right, everybody. Have a great day. I'll chat with you later, right on an hour right now. That's awesome. All right. You bet. We'll talk to you soon.